Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Tour of Slovenia highlights videos and of course this is stage two of the 2023 edition, the fight for the green. As you'll recall from stage one, it was one for the fast men and there were plenty of teams here of course, Carol Wild, one of them, the pro continental Spanish side, taking a picture with the fans. We also had Hodge here, there was a number of riders, Iolo Cometa, donning a jersey as well, courtesy of yesterday's escapades, and Matej Morohic, who was up there last year, almost taking a win on the final stage. Dylan Rønnevegen wearing the green leader's jersey here as he took stage one, and Mezget was a big part of that, together with Filippo Zana, their national Italian champion. But nevertheless, stage two, 163.7 kilometers. It had three intermediate sprints and the two cat four climbs along the way, one of them being within the last 15 kilometers. But the race got underway, and it was really a battle to get inside the breakaway early on. Plenty of fans out on the street and it was really good to see so many teams getting involved in the breakaway early on. Plenty of fans, young and old, on the sides of the road to congratulate the riders as they came. But nevertheless, we almost had a break forming. It seemed to be about a five, six man group, but Many of the teams wanting a sprint out of the day yet again, despite the dominance of Dylan Hoenewegen. But nevertheless, we eventually got our breakaway and that consisted of the rider who was in the breakaway yesterday, Garosio, Jak, uh, a Slovenian rider, Vermilion, uh, Austrian rider, Pavelik, as well, another Slovenian, and Volvic, the other riders on continental teams. But good to see so many Slovenian riders up there and even a fan on an e-scooter there showing just how fast that the ride is actually going. But it was a beautiful place with 74 kilometers to go. The brake still had a, a lead of over two minutes and out in front. And out in front, the Yuskatel Yuskari rider, Javier Isasa, was getting in the move and tried to even get off the front. 61.4 kilometers, they had a one minute and 33 second lead. It wasn't like the break was getting a long leash here, but with just over 51 kilometers to go, we had two riders escaping from the earlier breakaway train to get up the road. And it was one of the local continental teams and also the national team as well. With 43 kilometers to go, the remainder of the breakaway was wheeled back in by Jaco Ayula, who looked very strong and wanted yet another win here for Dylan Hoenwegen. The two riders out in front, it was Moran the Merlin, the Austrian rider for the team Vorlerberg, who was one of the last riders and really powered on. Too much so for Marco Pavlik, it seemed, as the two riders were getting further and further away from each other. The Slovenian national rider just giving up here, unfortunately, and the Austrian rider seemed like he was going to be the only one in the lead. With only 18.7 kilometers to go, he still had a 22 second gap and he was coming up that categorized climb that we talked about earlier. It was 3% in average, 4.5 kilometers long, and the max came at the beginning, 9.4%, but it had a kicker of 7.6% towards the finish. And it was interesting to see if any of the teams were actually gonna be doing anything here to try and get rid of Del Hoenewegen, the rider in the leader's jersey. But Bora Hansgrohe looked like they were up to the challenge to try and put some pressure on the Dutchman and Bahrain Victorious as well, trying to make some kind of a move over the climb. Bora taking the mountain points at the top and they made a move with Giovanni Aiotti. And this was covered by Alessandro Fedeli who was in the earlier breakaway yesterday. But 6.1 kilometers to go and it was all back together here in the 30th edition of the race. Carroal were up there, Bora Hansgrohe and Jaco Ayula all trying to make sure that they had their man in the correct position. But from the overhead camera shot, we could see that Jaco Ayula with two riders in front of Dylan Hoenewegen were positioned brilliantly on the right-hand side of the road. Bora Hansgrohe were also up here trying to get a, potentially another top 10 as they got with Edie Schelling the day before. And we also had Q36.5 in there as well. Alvaro Hodge, we were kind of missing him. We could just about make out Milano about 10 riders down. And it looked like Dylan Hoenewegen's train were absolutely doing the best here in terms of getting him in the right position. Q36.5, they saw an opening, but with only one lead out man, it seemed a bit of a ask to do that. Dylan Hoenewegen just getting a bit argy-bargy with the national Swiss champion as well. Soon Hoenewegen found himself with only one lead out man and Q36.5 were really 
trying to rev this up towards the finish. Dylan Hoenewegen was riding fourth wheel when Mezgic opening up his sprint once and for all. And again, it looked like Dylan Hoenewegen was in the best position, second wheel here, being followed by Phil Bauhaus. And it looked like the German and the Dutch rider were once again going to lock horns. And when they really opened up the sprint, it looked like Dylan Hoenewegen had the most and he did take the victory ahead of the Q36.5 rider. Celebrating yet another victory here for Dylan Hoenewegen. Bauhaus again condemned to another podium position, unfortunately, for the German. And yeah, Jaco Ayula's Dylan Hoenewegen absolutely on electric form right before the Tour de France, sweeping up another victory and extending his lead in that green jersey and the points classification as well. But yeah, quite exhausted at the finish and who knows how many watts he was doing to take that victory. But from the overhead shot here, we can see Q36.5 did an exceptional ride, but it was just Lucas Mezgic who just did a brilliant lead out for Dylan Hoenewegen, but Philip Bauhaus quick to pounce as well to make sure that he was in the best position on Hoenewegen's wheel. It was just a question whether he could actually do something once Mezgic moved out of the way. But Hoenewegen unfortunately went the wrong way in terms of Mezgic's wheel, and that meant that Mezgic almost took out his own sprinter, and then we had Phil Bauhaus coming from the left-hand side and Hoenewegen coming from the right-hand side. And then it was Muschetti who was getting involved as well. It looked like he might have just out-sprinted the fading Phil Bauhaus. And on the bike throw, it was very close between Dylan Hoenewegen and Muschetti. But Dylan Hoenewegen takes a second win in a row. And yeah, what an incredible feat that was for the Dutch rider. Just an absolutely excellent piece of explosive strength from him but Karual also get up there inside the top five but yeah Dylan Hoenewegen once again showing who is arguably one of the best sprinters Muschetti in second place Gonzalez in fourth place Freudo from Turo in fifth Mikel from the Kern Farmer team and Edith Schelling in seventh place Kolnagi from ba Kaunagi from the Green Project Barcelo again another top 10 for Cryo Ral and Marcel Marcel Luis Marcel Luis from Green Project as well. So not a bad day for many of the continental teams. And here is what Dylan Hoerwegen thought at the end of the stage. Uh, yeah, uh, first uh, the start was uh, was okay. We had a good break. Um, we had some control with Bahrain, so that was good. Then on the climb, uh, on the last climb, uh, Bora decided to yeah to go full gas. So that makes it a bit harder and uh, make the bunch a bit smaller. But then on the final, uh, yeah, we we waited really long. But then we had the right moment. Um, and then uh, Luca and me had a little bit of misunderstanding, but he did again a really great lead out with, uh, together with Posti. So, yeah, I lose a little bit of speed on the end when Luca go to the right, but uh, that's also good preparation before the tour. And he did again a really good lead out, and yeah, we get again the victory. So, uh, yeah, again, thanks to the, yeah, to the whole team. It was, uh, was really impressive, and also, again, a textbook lead out. But there we have it. But there we have it. Dylan Hoerwegen adding yet another stage to his illustrious Tour of Slovenia career. Yeah, that was basically stage two of the Tour of Slovenia. Of course, this is the 30th edition. Thank you to the organizers as well for giving the footage. Thank you to you for watching. Make sure to subscribe here on the Cycling Day in Extra channel. And sorry for yesterday's late upload. But yeah, that's basically it for today. Make sure to check out tomorrow's stage on stage three. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.